Hey. Good morning. Yeah, how are you? I'm just playing around. Playing around. That's even oh, better. Thing now. Yeah, that, that's more suiting. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? Thank you for coming in. Hi, Maria. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Dr. Walsh. How are you? Good, good, good to see you. Put a little background for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice background. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they had to close down the beaches down here, Nikki, because um, it was completely out of control. Um, the, the waves are good, and there were thousands of people that were coming in, and, uh, and it was just like the worst kind of you know, public health kind of concept of people from all over Southern California would come to San Clemente and they would spit all over each other and then they would go and come back every oh day. <laughs> I can't blame you guys for wanting to enjoy the beach though. It snowed here in Chicago oh. yeah. yesterday. So. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Now we I, had, I, we had, Chicago, I saw pictures. Yeah. This is uh, Raylan. This is Nikki. Uh, Raylan's from Chicago. Nikki's a uh, med school. At, uh, at Loyola. Loyola. Yeah. yeah. I can see, I see your sweatshirt, yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're a third year, right, Nikki? I am almost done with my second year. Ooh, okay. nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy. So we're taking exams from online now. Um, wow. Yeah. How's the transition going? Yeah. Um, luckily, I have my apartment to myself. My roommate is from Springfield, so she went back home. So. I've kind of just moved to the library into my living room and nice. <laughs> um, my boyfriend's also in my med school class so we keep each other on track which is really nice otherwise I'd be going crazy where's your apartment is it near campus Oak Park oh okay I live off of Southport okay awesome but right now I'm in LA so <laughs> nice <laughs> hey we just got Annette in there somewhere. She's coming in. Thomas, hey, Brandon. Hi, Annette. Hey, Bijana. Hi. Um, hi. Hi. Hi, Annette. Hello, Dr. So these are, hey, what's up, Brandon? So these are all different levels. I, I'm calling this my 310 alumni group, you know? so. Uh, uh, so, so Brandon, I forget, did you start medical school? Uh, no, I just uh, will be matriculating in August. Well, hopefully yeah. matriculating in August, considering the whole coronavirus situation right now. Yeah. Right, right. But you're saying, you got, you're, where, I forget where you're going. Uh, USC. USC, awesome. Very yeah. cool. Very cool, very cool. Yes, yeah, and Bijana took 310 last semester. Um, yeah. And, uh, so, I thought it was good, you know, cool to do this because uh, so much of what we did in class and over the years is so applicable, you know. And uh, so why not? Why not do it? So, mm -hmm. anyways, and there's is Thomas. I see Thomas is down there. What's up, Thomas? Hello. All right. Hey. Good. Good to good to have you with us, Thomas. 
I was one of those people uh, that um, that just took a liking to what we do in the classroom. And you're a computer science major, right, Thomas? I'm a physics major. Physics major, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah, still a so. physics major? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you haven't defected to Gerald yet? <laughs> no, I want to. Quantum is real mean. Oh. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Who else has seen Namisha? Are you, are, you, are you there, Namisha? Hey, yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Very cool. Hey, where, are you, where are you at right now? I'm actually back home in India right now. Oh, oh wow. wow. So how are yeah. things in India? Um, well, the cases aren't as bad, but it's a lot more strict in terms of the lockdown and uh, the containment quarantine zone. So it's like I still haven't stepped out. Like I'm not even allowed to go for, for a walk or something like that. So it is right. pretty strict, but it is what it is. How are you, yeah. Professor? Uh, we're doing good, you know, just uh, we're trying to behave and we're staying at home, you know, and uh, yeah. it's been, you know, it's there's there's compliance and there's not compliance <laughs> uh, we we have this tendency um southern california i just you know, i watch for, uh, and this thing because they're rich rules don't apply <laughs> it's kind of crazy you know but i see a lot of people uh, that, are, that are out there uh, i had a good buddy that just kept traveling, traveling, traveling all along, you know, and uh, and I he he was, he was like Gwyneth Paltrow, you know, from Contagion. <laughs> <laughs> hey Adriana, how are you? I'm good. Uh, how are you? Long right. time to see. Yeah, yeah. So so, so um so um um Adriana is going to med school as well. So we have a lot of med students. You know, so we have a we have a we have a net. We have Nikki who's finishing up her second year. Um, we have uh, Shavanti. All right, part of the core. Hi. <laughs> um, Justin Fong is here, and that's important because he's part of the USC marching band. <laughs> hey, how are you, Justin? Very cool. And uh, yeah, so we got a we got a good crew here. You know what I might do is to see here. I'm gonna. I'm going to try and find Maria again here. It might be useful to make you co-host so you can start yeah. letting people in. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just kind of trying to find your name in my career. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. You should be co-host now, Maria. I'm and co uh, yeah, so that, that way if you see people flashing in, just come in, you know, so yeah. as as I'm here doing things. There's Hi, there's Parsa, hey, there's Kijan, will you? And Sabrina. All right. How are you guys? Hello. Pretty good. Uh, awesome. Hey Sabrina, are you still work? So Sabrina went to go work for a pharmaceutical company, right, Sabrina? Um, not for pharmaceuticals, but I work for Biocom, which is the uh, trade association for the state of California for all life science companies. Uh, uh, oh, very good. awesome. Yeah. So um, yeah, there's oh, obviously big pharma. Not <laughs> yeah, I mean, I work with a lot of. Yeah pharma companies so it's been really cool like finding out what all these companies whether it's big pharma or just you know startups yeah, you know, all yeah. Their technologies and stuff yeah i have a yeah you know, it's funny I'm, i i i remember you guys talking in my class i have a real good friend i grew up with um hey there's luca too um uh, uh but i grew up with that um was he's a big deal in the clothing industry the and the same thing long ago, and he, he's, you know, the founder and CEO of Sanctuary Clothing. So mostly women's clothes, a bit more men's clothes, but, but so they've gone full tilt out for uh, coming up with a super fashionable mask and then coordinated gloves, because I think the gloves are the next thing that are coming down the pike that we're going to be wearing. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, so there, I saw, there was a meeting last week that suggested that fall semester. So for you guys that go see but I see in general, hey, Astoria, 
is um, you know masks are going to be be required, maybe highly recommended as and um, and we'll keep face in the classroom and you know, it'll be a it'll be a brave new world until we start making some inroads on how to do this thing. So very cool. All righty. Well, let, let's do. Do you guys want to listen to Doc Walk quick lecture? <laughs> All right, so I, 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 you know, obviously I couldn't help myself, but to, but to put myself into, um, you know, what's going on, and uh, and and you guys know my, all know my wife pretty well, and she, um, she was was on, I kid you not. So before there was even a Hopkins website or any of that, um, it was end of January. She started plotting the data on the NXL, and. Uh, she was like, this is coming, this is coming. <laughs> so, you know, if, if somebody like her could do it, you'd think that people in Washington would have been on a little bit. <laughs> but this is what it is. All righty. Cool, 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 cool. Well, I'm going to um, do now, I'm just I'm going to share the PowerPoint and we'll do that. And I'll feel free to pipe in and uh, Maria can, Chat or other, uh, Maria Asha um, is you can wave your hand, Maria. Maria's um, uh, uh, like two, like in my class for years, and uh, so yeah. she's help, is helping a little bit here. So, alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and, and share the screen right now. All right, and, and uh, I think we'll just um, go basic share and um, so hopefully you'd let me know, Maria, is everything looking good here? Yes, it's looking good. And if it, if nothing does, I also have it downloaded so I can share my screen if yeah. we need to. So, so what I did is I switched to Julie's computer. That we, we were having a little issue with our, um, our wireless yesterday. So, all righty. So, um, all right, so there it is, my friends. Um, so this is that article that I sent all you guys. You know, I had, you know, it was so crazy for you guys that were in my class, um, not the last fall, but the fall before. Um, Blackboard would not let me send you the, the documents. And so I was like, screw this. I went in and, um, and found all the email addresses and sent it to you directly. <laughs> so I thought that was important. So you just kind of follow my cursor. And uh, so this is the piece right here, um, uh, SARS-CoV-2. Okay, this is uh, COVID-19 virus. The um, this article really goes a lot of the strategies that are being developed and and it really like I said there's so much what we did in class that is so applicable so you see right here on the very top, this, this is at the uh, you know you, you have air you've just breathed it in and you have um, the, the the special cells that, that line your lungs on the alveoli um, some mucus producing some are direct absorbers of oxygen and they the, the, the way it work, it's like a Trojan horse. And so it binds to the A2. Uh, we have, and we'll go over this, you guys are remember the angiotensin converting enzymes. So this was really important for hypertension and memory with your kidneys. And uh, so your kidney tracts with your lungs and, and bizarrely uh, the, the renin will, um, will you know, produce angiotensin one, angiotensin one, angiotensin 2 flies off to, the, to your vasculature. So this A2 right here um, is just normal part of it. It's a Trojan horse. So it, it binds the receptor and that's how it gets into to your, um, your alveolar cells. And um, so there's lots of targets. Uh, so this right here at, at the end. So this targeting the ACE, the binding protein that's listed there which um, is, you know, TMPR, SSS2, and, and that's just another protein that's expressed that, that the virus uses. Once it gets in, um, then uh, what happens is the, 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 the virus has to unleash its fury uh, by uh, um, integrating its, um, its RNA into your DNA, and then, then it, it gets taken over. And uh, so we see this problem in there, the encoding, and then we start doing the transition down here. And, and the peptides um, uh, that first get uh, um, produced 
they have to undergo a proteolytic modification and then they become proteins that are you know integral for viral replication that's over with the RNA dependent polymerase. So there's a couple of drugs that are out there that are in clinical trial right now that are going after this protease. So stopping it in it's in its tracks here. So you stop it in from even getting in up here, you stop it in its tracks right here. Um, we have um, you guys remember the the, the nomenclature out there, we have the, IR, the IRs, the BIRs. So these are our drugs that, uh, that inhibit uh, replication of viruses. What, what, what they are is they are, they look a lot like peptides. They look a lot like purines or adenosine, um, and, um, but they're not quite. And so the virus gets to that point and then stops replication. And that's how that works. And then, of course, <clears throat> not listed in here are the all the different types of immune therapies that are being developed. You know, right now, we're just we're, we're you know really relying on on trying to develop uh, a, uh, an, an antibody against it. And so, you know, there are you know probably ninety companies around the country um, that are in the process of doing this. It takes a long time. We keep hearing this talk like a year away. Um, and then the other thing is is uh, you know basically plasmapheresis where we we take the plasma and isolate the antibodies and get get the IgG put it in the patients and that's you know basically you, know, you guys remember Julie's story so she went down and got her IVIG last month at UCSD Moore's Cancer Center and um, and uh, we're hoping that there might be some COVID-19 antibodies in there all right so this is very relevant to what we've talked about in our class um, so we kind of, um, we look up on top and it just again, again, it shows you the function of the alveolus and, and, and you see the, the capillary flow in this exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen up here on the, in the right hand corner. Um, and uh, you know, that it is what it is. That's, that's who we are. This is how we survive. We need oxygen. There's two different types of cells that they talk about. One has, has the oxygen passing through it. And like I said, the other one is a, a mucus secretor. Um, we see the virus right here, okay, highlighted, and um, the, the you know the virus you know you know we inhale it, so this is you know coming from here, you know coming from your mouth down down your your uh, bronchi to your bronchioles down into the alveoli, and then it just binds to um, the surface receptors that we're talking about. So it's hijacking, and so what it does is it, it binds to um, the uh, um, uh, angiotensin converting enzyme to protein that is sitting right in there. Okay, and once it gets access, then it gets in. So then when it gets in, um, the immune system, of course, rallies, all right? And so, um, and, and, and the, 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 the first centuries are going to be your, uh, in the, your innate myeloid-based immune system, all right? So these are your macrophages for the most part. Uh, and then, you know, in comes the dendritic cells, you know, and, and, um, and all they know is they, they, um, they try and do agocytose, and they also sound the incredibly, you know, incredible super alarm. The IL-6 is the predominant one. IL-6 is just go, 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 go. There's TNF-alpha, everything. And, um, and then what that does, um, it, it, it increases the permeability of your right here so that more and more cells can, can come up and um, so that and then I don't know if you guys remember that you know, for Nikki might remember this and you guys went to med school will we'll think about this it's called diapetitis and, and and that's where the 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 white blood cells just start squeezing out and squeezing out squeezing out squeezing out um, as they as the membranes the endothelials get more and more cells get more and more porous um, you get lots and lots and lots of fluid as well that starts coming out. And, uh, and the more cytokines, the more fluid, and it becomes a downward spiral. And uh, it gets more and more por porous and proteins come out and this whole osmotic flux happens. And then this is what happens to the alveoli. So you see the alveoli filling up, filling up and filling up. And uh, unlike a pneumonia, it's, that can be really localized to a, a lobule, it goes freaking everywhere. And, uh, and so, and, it, and that's why people are, are crashing within 24 or 48 hours. And, um, 
And you basically, you put something on a ventilator, but the ventilator only works if you have an alveoli like we have up here that has a surface where the oxygen can come in and where the um, carbon dioxide can come out. So if you have all this infection like you have down in here, then there's nowhere for the oxygen to go. So um, they're, you know, the thing that they've been doing, they've been doing a lung machine. So that way what we do is you pass the lung and you basically take out the blood from the patient, you oxygenate the blood using the machine and you put the blood right back in and so it keeps them alive. Um, all righty. Uh, this just kind of, you know, again, highlights what's going on, you know, uh, in terms of the infections. And again, it's this massive immune response um, with lots and lots and lots of cytokines. This particular slide is a little blurry because I, I, I blew it up. Prophages are, again, are the key players. Um, you know, pneumonia develops, fluid accumulates inside the alveolus. You know, you start getting the shortness of breath, you have hospitalization. Um, neutrophils come in here, they're, they're renowned for secreting reactants and species, and that starts killing all more of the lung cells. Um, and you start going all this downward spiral. So you can see, you know, the, the immune system has the best intent, but it's, it's just an over, overdone, um, uh, um, you know, cytokine storm. And basically, in the end, you go into septic shock. You have multi-organ failure. So, so, and, I, and I'll point this out, this out later on, this is a, exactly kind of what goes down when you, when you get meningitis. And um, so I'm, you know, hopefully you guys all got your, you know, your vaccination for meningitis A and B, and it covers about, obviously about different um, um, bacterial species that cause meningitis. Um, same drill in meningitis, you know, you, you'll be fine. All of a sudden you start having a headache, you have a stiff neck, Within within 24 hours, um, you're in the hospital. With you know, within 48 hours, you could possibly die, and it's all because of of this gigantic cytokine storm. When that's what that's what septic shock is. It's just the same drill. It's the immune system just having a huge cytokine storm. The difference is now in 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 um, in meningitis is um, the bacteria has left the meninges. It's in the blood and um, and, and everywhere it goes, the immune system attacks, creates a cytokine storm, and, and people um, um, will have failure of the vasculature that, that is going to the lower limbs, so you get a lot of amputations. You have failure in the vasculature um, going to the kidneys, so, so many, many people have, um, have uh, lose their kidneys and have kidney transplant and, and they have um, meningitis. Okay, cool. All righty, next slide. Let's see. All right, is it gonna go or is it gonna stick? <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm trying to advance my slide here. Again. Let's see if I can get it. There we go, cool. All righty, so, um, so these are, you know, um, uh, uh, this was a, a, from a, like a week ago and, and the, the drugs that keep coming, just keep coming and coming and coming, okay? So we've heard a lot about chloroquine, okay? Um, I don't know if you remember that. So we'll, I'll show you a slide where we kind of went over before chloroquine. Um, it was an anti-malarial drug, and, and serendipitously back when, in World War II, they noticed that people that had autoimmune disease seemed to have, be faring slightly better, okay? Um, the, so the approaches, like I said, um, um, up on top of antiviral drugs that are new to analogs that interfere with the progression of the RNA polymerase. We have the uh, specific viral drugs, okay? So, so um, these drugs will go after and keep the viral protease from um, um, altering the protein that it needs to do to make, to make the full virus happen. Um, we have immune system drugs that are going to trying to get after this cytokine storm, all right? So Plaquenil is a, a DMARD, okay? It's a disease-modifying anti disease drug. Still to this day, not fully understood, it's thought to reduce T cell function. T cells, the helper cells release the kinds that then activate the macrophages that cause the IL-6 to be elevated. Um, I keep hearing more and more reports that this stuff is not working. That's what I keep hearing. Um, all right, um, 
the other thing is is there's a bunch of clinical trials where we have um, uh, interleukin-6 receptor antagonists. Um, these are antibodies, so you infuse these, and um, and it, it keeps the cascading uh, cytokine from happening. So remember, IL-6 will go down to your liver and cause CRP elevation. Okay, CRP then is a key player that will go and then kill off any tissue that um, that is is not healthy. Um, believe it or not, uh, there's a clinical trial also for um, ibrutinib. And I spelled it wrong. I brute nib. It's I brute nib. <laughs> okay. And um, and calibrute nib, which is a newer version one. If you guys remember that, that was from um, uh, Julie's clinical trial. Okay. So this will knock out your B cells. And uh, it's real important for anybody who has a B cell cancer. It puts the brain in B cells. It just so happens that the same kinase is expressed in macrophages. And so... So while um, you may not mount a, uh, an acquired specific lymphatic immunity, uh, uh, immunity as strongly, you're not going to have the big cytokine storm that seems to be the Achilles heel for patients. So it's super important. Okay. So yeah, so then, you know, I highlighted this. So here's the, um, the VIR, VIRs right here. Those are inhibiting the um, ability to make the viral RNA, um, and it's, it's interfering with the polymerase by having a nucleotide analog, um, and protease inhibitors, and, and, and like I said, the IL-6 antagonist. So, um, you know, I will continue to send you guys updates on this. Um, so this is, um, you know, the, the slide that, that we used to use in class that talks about anti-malarial drugs. We see over here, Plaquenil. So this is where it is right here. Um, Plaquenil gets in here, and it's going to inhibit the um, the antigen present, presenting cell. And by inhibiting that, then you inhibit the production of these cytokines over here on the on the right hand side: IL-1, IL-6, IL-17. All super aggressive, super activators in the immune system that that again have the best intention, but in the end can cause lots and lots of problems. And these right here are a bunch of other DMARs. Um, there is a, a clinical trial for this antibiotic as well, um, and that is leflunamide, okay, and that's shown right over here. Um, I, I would be surprised if they didn't start trying methotrexate as well. So, um, yeah, of course, this was for, this is a slide from our class where we were looking at um, rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. Okay, um, here's another clinical trial, okay. So this G, GMCSF, um, this is a growth factor, and the GMCSF um, will go to um, some many, many different um, um, uh, uh, myeloid cells, all right? So it's granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, all right? So it's going to go to granulocytes, it's going to go to, to uh, the macrophages, and it gives them an absolute rocket fuel burst of gasoline to undergo massive proliferation. So if you can put in an antibody against this, and that's exactly what it's done, then, then you can slow it down. All right, cool, all righty. So this is um, just kind of a look at um, this antibody right here. Remember the AB, the AB. So this is an antibody raised against the IL-6 uh, receptor. So this is the um, IL-6 receptor we see right here, okay? So um, it's expressed in lots of different tissue, um, we, uh, with the IL-6 receptor, remember we did um, talk about it in class in terms of it binding to the, to, the, um, to the liver, and then that causes CRP. So we see over here on the left-hand side um, that if we can block the IL-6 with, uh, with the IL-6 uh, antibody, so the antibody is a receptor, and this way the IL-6 can't get to the receptor, then you're going to reduce the reactive protein um, for, uh, and there are other um, what are called um, uh, acute phase reactants that happen from the liver during an infection. And, and you can measure that, remember, just by looking at the um, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So, so there are big changes here. Um, by uh, blocking IL-6 action, it, um, it also alters hemoglobin production. All right, so we actually see an increase in hemoglobin production, which is good 
Because remember, people are having respiratory distress, so this is going to increase your O2 carrying capacity. Um, it works right here uh, by decreasing rheumatoid factors and there, again other stimulators of the immune system. And then over here on the right hand side, uh, um, the really aggressive um, uh, cytokine released by by T cells is Th17, and it inhibits that. So, so there is a lot of promise, I think, in terms of using this this uh, antibody approach to keep IL6 from binding to the um, to the IL6 receptor in in liver tissue and in other parts of the body. Okay. All right, my sometimes my computer's getting a little slow, so I'm gonna get going. And because, because I'm, I'm not getting the advance of the PowerPoint, but it will happen, I promise. All right, if not, I can stop share. So Maria, Maria is, it, is my share okay? Is it clear? Yeah, your, your screen is clear. Yeah. Okay, good. It's just sometimes it freezes up, so. Um, oh. Yeah, and that's kind of what it's doing. Okay, I'm just going to stop sharing and reshare it again, guys. So, because that's what, that's the drill, All right? So, yeah. All right, so we'll just go back and reshare. Um, What's up, Andrew? I'm seeing people. <laughs> okay. All right. And if worst case scenario, I also yeah. have downloaded so I can share if you want to. Yeah, I know. I think it's okay. It's just, I think the PowerPoint was just freezing up. So we'll, we'll get back in there and we'll get going again. Okay. Cool. I'm back. All right. Um, let's see. See if I can go full screen again, if it does, because it makes for a better view. If not, then we found that this, uh, for you guys, if when you zoom, sometimes when you go full screen on PowerPoint, it doesn't like it either. So uh, we'll see what happens here. All right. All right, cool. Hey, check that out. <laughs> okay, so this was, um, so this is another clinical trial, all right? So Sabrina's probably on, on all this. Um, um, so this is the AstraZeneca, okay? And um, so this clinical trial, again, is um, basically it's capping in to an inhibition of Bruton's tyrosine kinase. So um, you guys remember that from, from Julia's leukemia, highly expressed in B cells. So when you have B cell cancer, um, you're gonna go after the Bruton's kinase. Uh, so you see over here on the right-hand side, this is just a, a, an immune system cell. This particular cell, however, is um, the innate immunity. Okay, this is a macrophage. Bruton's kinase is also expressed in there as well. Like it was a double-edged sword for Julia when she was taking her Bruton's tyrosine kinase to get rid of her cancerous B cells. She was really, really vulnerable to bacterial infections because of what it was doing here. And um, so uh, that was when she started taking IVIG to help in that way. So we see Bruton's tyrosine kinase plays lots of different roles here in terms of, um, of the activation pathways that, that, that are necessary to make the macrophage an aggressive phagocyte and also an aggressive messenger down here of secreting all these different types of cytokines, okay? Um, we see right here, do you guys remember kappas? What do we know about the kappas? <laughs> Good, but they <laughs> All right, so um, so the, the kappa, NF kappa B, again, is a key player in terms of producing, um, in terms of uh, synthesizing all these cytokines. That's kind of an interesting clinical trial as well. And, and what was happening in the blog that, that Julie is part of, the many different websites for people that suffer from chronic lymphocytic leukemia, many of them taking a brood number calibrated. But um, what we got out of Italy was that older patients, now these are people in the 70s that were very uh, sick. John, your video, not your, your voice froze a little. Can you please repeat what you said? Sure. Sure. So, so, um, so what was happening in, um, this is uh, coming out of, is it okay now, Maria? Yes. Okay, good. So, um, so what was happening um, out of in Italy was that there were cancer patients, uh, CLL patients, that were taking ibrutinib, and um, um, they were 70 years of age in that range, super high risk, 
and they weren't getting very sick from COVID-19. And so this is just epidemiology, but what's different about these guys? And the only difference was they were taking the brood. And so, and so this has led to this clinical trial. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. You know, you, hear about where you, you think you don't want to inhibit the immune system because of how, how infectious this virus is, but um, maybe if you, when you inhibit it, you don't knock it all the way down, just a partial inhibition may save people. Right, T. So I'm just about ready, Maria, to give up on my 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 PowerPoint, doing doing what I was doing. All right, all right. It's freezing, so I'm gonna get out of that. Don't give up on me, guys. All right, T. There it is. Okay, I'm back in in a sec here. So this ha this happens. Uh, with my PowerPoints every once in a while, if it happens with, with other instructors, but it doesn't mind, but that's okay. All right, because um, what I can do is I can just go like this, and you guys can see that pretty well. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, and, and it just makes makes the advance so it doesn't freeze up. Okay, cool. Boom, all righty. Um, so it's a cool website um, uh, that that's dis discussing, uh, um, you know, the lead candidates that are out there. So I kind of throw it out there. All right, so so there's the bees, just a reminder. Um, these spike proteins that are, that are binding directly to, um, as I indicated, uh, um, angiotensin converter two, and we see this right in here. So um, this uh, has led to clinical trials. So this is a clinical trial right here. Um, uh, it's company Biospace, and so so what they're doing there was in it Biospace is a communication for biotech companies, and they talk about three different clinical trials. One clinical trial was just to flood the the bloodstream with angiotensin converting enzyme two, just put it in there, and um, in the hopes that that would just occupy the virus. Um, um, but when you do that, you're also going to increase the level of hypertension. And patients are taking um, drugs to reduce angiotensin II um, production. So that had, they were talking that had some side effects. Interesting, you know, who's a high risk patient? A high risk patient is somebody that has hypertension. And so they were finding that patients that were taking um, angiotensin II angiotensin converting enzyme to um, inhibitors, what happens in their lungs is their lungs um, uh, will respond to that drug and overproduce the um, angiotensin converting enzyme protein in the surface of the lung. And so, um, so what was happening is there was a lot more kind of pathway or Trojan horse for the bacteria to get in. All right, just gonna go back here. This is just to remind you guys, from way back when, so here we are. Okay, um, remember um, hypertensive of patients, um, the kidneys are not working right, so they want more perfusion, they produce renin. Renin causes angiotensin one to be converted and then angiotensin one will go through the vasculature up to the lungs and find angiotensin converting enzyme. It then converts it to angiotensin two and then it does all these different things to increase your blood pressure, okay? so. I guess this is the relationship of ACE and the relationship of patients to that um, are taking ACE inhibitors. So like I said, so the so COVID-19 used ACE as a Trojan horse, you know, basically. And that's how it binds the lung. It can, and then, and then uh, the immune system flips out when it has massive replication and you have your cytokine storm. And anyways, cool. Um, this is a, a cool website for clinical trials. I encourage you guys to kind of take a look at it. Um, and, um, and yeah, so uh, um, yeah, there's no point in me going through that, but there's a, there, it's, it's, it's a, a really excellent website that looks at uh, clinical trials. You can do like clinicaltrials.gov, but it's a little hard to manage. Just I found this website to be much better. All right, so this is, um, it's at home. You know about who's getting sick, okay? And this relates to our, you know, to our class. Our class is all about aging. When we looked at, um, you know, the topics we raised in 310, it was all about aging. 
And uh, so we, we can see that uh, the biggest risk factor for um, being hospitalized and dying from COVID-19 is being older, all right? And that's no surprise you've been hearing about that. All right, so, um, so what, what's going on in the aging immune system that explains this, okay? So um, when we look at the older immune function, the immune system from older people, we see clear changes, okay? First of all, we lose um, the cellularity uh, in our bone marrow, um, the ability to produce immune fighting cells, the hematopoietic potential. So for every 10 years of age, you lose about 10% of your cellularity. So, um, so uh, you know, I'm 63, so I've lost, you know, you know about 63% <laughs> compared to you guys, okay? Um, uh, there's a transition that happens as we go get older, and I'm sure you guys remember this, we go from a, a more of a T1 dominated to a T2 dominated, TH2, sorry, um, TH helper one to TH helper two dominated um, uh, T cell line. And um, with that, you also see a move towards from lymphoid when you're younger to a more myeloid cell line. And the myeloid cell line is the key driver that uh, produces IL-6, all right? Um, then we'll talk about chronic disease next, okay? So that's what that is. So we'll go right over here. This is a familiar slide from our class, okay? So the large green ball here is your um, hematic, hematic, um, hematopoietic stem cell potential when you're nice and young, and you see it becomes nice and small over here as you got older, all right? So, and I can add even a, uh, an arrow, okay? So we see here, young to old. So your stem cell potential goes down, okay? But um, important in terms of what dominates when you go from Th1 to a more Th2 is this myeloid lens that begins to dominate. And again, this myeloid lens is the one that is mostly macrophage high IL producer that seems to be problematic in terms of the cytokine storm. Okay, you guys remember this one? Okay, so this just reiterates it, okay? So um, we have shrinking levels of the, the um, lymphocyte side of our immunity, the acquired immunity, the specific immunity. So we get a contraction of these cells, the diversity of these cells, they go down. So that, that's bad in terms of eradicating the virus. Um, and then secondly, since we have uh, this predominance when we become TH2-like, is that we become more myeloid over lymphoid and you have this production of IL-6 and TNF-alpha that are the key players in the cytokine storm that cause the failure in the lungs that I was showing here. All righty. Next, okay. So, um, um, this, this basically kind of uh, um, is a summary. So we see new um, cellularity, right? Losing bone marrow capacity to put out our lymphocytes. Uh, remember the thymus de decreases in function as we get older, so the T cells are not as good. And then we had this shift where we become more myelite uh, in action, and that leads to a lot more cytokine storms. Okay. What about chronic diseases? Okay, so you know here it is. All right. So beyond all that other uh, uh, immune system problem that we we're talking about, uh, people suffer from chronic diseases. And when you suffer from arthritis, um, when you suffer from heart disease, when you suffer from cancer, diabetes, COPD, and even asthma, all of these are inflammatory diseases, which means that you have uh, an, uh, uh, an immune system that is already upregulated in terms of inflammation. And same when you get an infection, your ceiling to, to going into sepsis is, is really short, is smaller. And this is why all these people with these chronic diseases are, are again, at high risk and, and why they're the first ones to get hospitalized, first ones to get intubated, and the first ones to die, all right? Um, again, just a familiar slide, and, you, and again, you look at 
in an older person and inflammation and all these different conditions that are either directly or indirectly related to inflammation and all of them um, can become problematic. Now, again, part of, the, part of what I'm hearing um, is, uh, is people that are taking drugs for autoimmune diseases like ulcerative colitis and irritable bowel disease, as long as you're taking your autoimmune disease drugs, you're going to have a slightly suppressed immune system and you're not going to generate the cytokine storm. So these people that are taking drugs for this, again, are protected. Same with arthritis. So it's kind of, it's kind of bizarre in that way. Okay. All righty. What's another risk factor in terms of who's getting sick and who's dying with COVID-19? It's obesity. And what do we know about people that have obesity? We know that their tummy fat, their visceral fat, is just a giant, giant endocrine um, organ. And not only is it an endocrine organ, it is where all of the macrophages go in. So remember how inflammatory um, visceral fat is. And it underlies cardiovascular disease. It can, it, it's a big issue with, with diabetes and all the secondary problems that diabetics have. And because you have all these macrophages in here, again, your baseline for inflammation is boom, way higher, all right? So then when you get infected, all, you have so many macrophages that are in high, already in high alert, boom, you go into, into uh, septic shock quickly. Okay. All right, somebody tell me that this is my favorite figure. I don't know, Maria. So, <laughs> um, this is a diabetic, okay? Diabetics are at high risk. What do we know about diabetics, okay? Lots of uh, unregulated blood sugar binding to advanced medication and uh, making advanced medication and products binding to receptors for advanced medication and products. And this is the whole atherosclerotic cascade, but do not forget that it causes. Rage causes a whole, whole initiation of um, all the cytokines that are problematic, okay? So we see TNF-alpha. Uh, we also would see IL-6 in the whole nine guards. All right, cool. All right, so these are a couple of good articles, again, about who's getting sick, um, who's, you know, the epidemiology, who's at risk. Uh, this is just kind of a reminder, again, of, you know, what happens as we get older. Um, as we're younger, um, infants don't mount huge responses, so they're relatively protected. Um, they're mostly, mostly at, uh, at a TH2, um, as, and then they become more TH1. Women are a lot more TH1 than men. Don't forget that, okay? Um, and, um, and then um, the TH2 bias goes off like this. So we have, we go up, we go down, we go like this, okay? So we see that um, the excessive TH1 is an autoimmune uh, problem, but it's um, also, it is more of a protector, okay? Um, so when you switch from your TH1 bias to TH2, um, there is an imbalance and it makes people lots more uh, susceptible to influenza and pneumonia which is what we're staring down the barrel of right now, okay? So it is this natural age-related shift that happens. Um, what else? How about gender, okay? So, um, so, so it's, it's clear from almost every day that's coming out that women are, are faring better than men. And um, so, uh, you know, what, what is the underlying uh, reason for this? It, it really does calm down to um, the T cells, okay? And uh, the fact that women are more Th1 based than men are. And so, so, so you're going to, first of all, have a better um, a, a specific lymphoid acquired, I use all those adjectives, immune system that will, will immediately go after the virus. And you're not gonna be so reliant on macrophages that are such so problematic in terms of producing the um, cytokine storm. It's not that the T cells don't make cytokines as well, but, um, but the, the macrophages seem to be a problem. This was, uh, I was thinking, you know, as you understand, I'm sure you guys have been hearing the same thing. Um, and you remember that when women have um, uh, autoimmune disease, that their autoimmune disease disappears when they become pregnant. And that's because when they become pregnant, they shift from this Th1 to a more Th2 based immunity, and so the immunity, autoimmunity goes away. Um, 
but we're also finding that pregnant women are doing really well in terms of COVID-19. And the difference with this is that women, when they're pregnant, have tons of Tregs. Those are your um, T suppressor cell lines. That makes them far different than men that are who have the max T regs. Okay. Reason T regs, you don't want to be having your system rejecting the fetus. Okay. And this particular article, article was looking as well at cancer, and um, and uh, the reason the immune system doesn't go after cancer is kind of similar to this: is that the T regs get produced in here to tell the immune system, no, nah, don't attack the cancer. Awesome. Okay. Alrighty, um, so I put this up here because I think pretty much everybody remembers um, watching The Emperor of All Maladies. And so um, I just took some excerpts from this article. I also put the article, so I've, I've changed the, the as, as I always do. Um, I'm looking at Adriana, so as I always, always change my PowerPoints, and you guys have to go back and download all new ones. Um, but we'll get, the, uh, I can send this one out to you. Um, um, so this was from, from the Maladies at the very end, um, and, and Emily Whitehead was um, uh, a five-year-old girl, and she had super aggressive, acute lymphocytic leukemia. She was dying. They had done everything they could, and so they decided they were going to they were going to try uh, CAR T cell therapy, and um, so they did the CAR T. Okay, so you guys remember CAR T? You take out your your T cells, and you uh, probably expect them into becoming just ungodly aggressive uh, cells that will go after the leukemic um, um, myelite cells in this, in, in, I mean, lymphocytic cells in this case. And, um, and what happened is she was doing fine, and then all of a sudden things spiraled downward out of control, and she, she was dying, Her shut down. This sounds just like meningitis. This, this is also happening in COVID-19. People are having kidney failure, multi-organ failure. It was the full, full-blown um, uh, cytokine storm. And um, so, um, you know, as you guys remember from the movie, okay, um, he relied on the fact that he was familiar with an IL-6 receptor antagonist. And so the drug was just recently approved. They gave it to her and boom, she came out of it. And so, um, so this is you know, very relevant to the clinical trials that are happening right now. All right, another couple of cool websites for you guys to check out. Um, you know, I, I list this and um, um, they have updated this. This is the Hopkins website, so you can go into your region. So do check that out. You can see if your individual is doing. Um, this website for me has been super informative. It's the European version for the Center for Disease Control. And, um, and I think I have that already highlighted. And then this is the modeling that everybody's been, been talking about from the University of Washington. And you can, again, put your state in and it's pro, you know, projections uh, about what's going on here. Let me go back here. And then this last web computer programmer, you know, computer programmers is really cool. So, Actually, I didn't want to go to that one. I'm going to get out of here. No, sorry. That was me, my habit. I was Julie's, I'm on Julie's computer. So, <laughs> all right, cool. So I want to go over here and look at this. A pretty cool uh, uh, a website that a programmer put together. And so what I'm going to do here is we're going to look at the very big. And so this shows the depression over date, all right? Looking at here's all the diseases we've talked about in all my classes. Um, these are, as see at the top here, is the um, daily average cause of death. And we're going to watch um, COVID-19, how it progressed in a month's time in terms of cause of death. So you see it's just barely starting to trickle around here at the bottom, five, six, seven. All right, March 15th, March 16th, March 19th, and then boom, boom, boom. And stuff March 7th. Um, I would imagine it would be, um, we were having 
2,100, 2,200 deaths. So this would continue to grow. So yeah, it's, just, it's kind of a cool website in that it really shows what's going on. Um, what do we have here? This is the, this is, um, this is the website I was referring to from the European, European Center for Disease Control. And what, you know, it's very interactive. And that's kind of what I, I like about it. So you see here, we, we're looking at uh, the number of deaths worldwide. And what you can do is you can actually go in here and you can select your countries and to get scale, you can just kind of go like this and get rid of the ones so you have scale. And then you can look at, you know, some some countries that, you know, that have fared poorly. So um, um, we can look at, uh, um, of course, our friend Italy. Um, and you see it's now Italy shown in the back. We can look at, um, you know, the ones that got the most notoriety, there's Spain, and then of course, um, there's us. And so you click right there and you go boom. And this is where it is right here in terms of um, um, today. They update this, this website a couple times a day. So it's, it's really, really quite, quite informative. Um, again, it's super interactive. You know, it's, it's, it's a really nicely done website. And, um, and then down here, there's another interactive website, so it's 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 bar graphs, and um, and it, depending on what you click right here, that will so you can look at the the top double doubling rates. Okay, so so you see now um, these these countries that that were not in the news, the doubling rate is starting to get really quick. Or you can click here, and it's going to be looking at the total deaths. Of course, we're we're tops in the world, baby. Um, so, <laughs> and then, um, and then this, the same thing comes down here. So if you want to, you know, look at the different aspects, you can look at infection rates versus death rates. And this is right here, again, looking at the infection rates. And so we see, um, again, the United States is top and you see how, again, it's very, very interactive. So cool. And this is the Hopkins map, uh, like I was telling about, and you can go into the U.S. maps right here. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really quite you know it's really interesting and now and then you can see by by region you know where where how how we're faring it's, it has it over here on the left hand side numerically how we're doing in terms of oops, sorry in terms of regions and um and you see you can zoom in and look at a region so it's, it's really really quite um quite interactive All right cool awesome so uh so that's it guys that's that's my story um, and I'm really, really stoked that you guys all joined me. <laughs> um, um, if you guys have any questions at all, you know, fire away. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know all the answers. I should probably bring Julian because Julian knows all the answers. Um, but, um, and it's really, really just cool to see all of you, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know if a lot of you guys have had a chance to, to interact, you know. I, um, but, um, you know, there, this is the forum. I mean, I'm, I'm, we have two visit people here. I'm looking over here. All righty. And, um, and I could certainly, you know, send you into smaller breakout rooms. If not, we can, we can talk here and just, you know, talk all over each other <laughs> in Zoom. But uh, there, I'm, I I'm done. A, I have a question. If uh -huh. you had to bet money, hypothetically of course if, or you know which of the therapies do you think has the best if you had to put a guess best shot do you think it could be uh one of the antivirals remdesivir or do you think it it's a combination of say abutinib and remdesivir combined yeah i think i think clearly um combinations are going to probably be the key until um more specific tools so so these are the tools we have in hand right now um and and they're not you know they're not designed none of them were designed to COVID 19 you know so we're just you know so combinations are probably going to be tested and 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 they're going to be the best thing say six months from now and then um you know the 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 um antiviral drugs that that interfere with the rna polymerase that's you know a huge area of research because it's you know it's it's like taking Tamiflu you know so if you can if you can get something that becomes really specific to COVID-19 then that can be mass produced and you know be on the shelves at Walgreens you know pretty quickly you know but that's you know that's research you know that's down the line for sure so 
But I think combinations are going to be our finger in the dike to keep us going, probably. Cool. What else? Any other questions? How are you, Andrew? Go ahead. Who's somebody's talking? Oh, it's me, Annette. Hi, Annette. <laughs> Hi, first of all, that was really good, really informative. I haven't taken classes in a year and I still understood it. So I was like, it was really good. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. What do you think um, about, I read a story about people saying the reason California isn't being hit so hard is because they think some of us have immunity to this virus beforehand. And I just want to know if you like read anything about that and what you think about like, why it's taking so long to get antibody tests and all of that. Cause people say like testing, testing, testing. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, yeah. And first of all, you no, know, obviously we, we were totally underprepared as a country. Um, it's, you know, and it's funny how it's like a hot potato. Now it's not the state's problem. Now it is the state's problem <laughs> and back and forth. Um, yeah, and I, I did see that, and, and certainly, um, you know, we are, um, we you know we're we're part of the Pacific Rim, you know, and um, and so we have we have a lot more um, um, kind of global interactions with with countries all over uh, uh, the South Pacific, China, everywhere, and so um, and, and both. You know, China had its huge outbreak, et cetera, and, and there's a lot of like political statements of all oh, they're, they're hiding stuff, and who knows? But, but you know, potentially there was a lot of herd immunity there as well, you know. And, um, bye, Jess. Um, bye, thank <laughs> you so much. Uh, uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Um, but yeah, there's you know, so so there could be herd immunity there, and we could have it as well here. You know, because of the fact that we are such, you know, not only Pacific Rim, but you know, you know, you know, my my buddy that I was talking about, Ken Flacco, you know, that that makes sanctuary clothing, he he flies to China once a month, once a month, you know, and because um, he has he has uh, giant factories there, factories in Vietnam, um, he has, <laughs> you know, and he's and it is what it is, and he's just one of many, you know, so. Yeah, that's that's a good question for sure. There's there's Alaya. Hi Alaya. Alaya Alaya's a new student in the group. So we have alumni. I don't know if you I I think possibly Nikki was your TA once Alaya <laughs> and Al and Annette. So these are um these are all um different cohorts of, of students. So 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 Alaya is in the program right now, which is cool, which is way cool. And uh yeah. Thank you so much for hosting this. Oh, very cool. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I just, you know, I, 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 I wanted to deliver it with the perspective of what I know and also, you know, perspective of what you guys know, you know, because you guys definitely have seen this. And so um, I'm, I'm sure, um, so, so Andrew, did, was this familiar territory for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a, uh, it, it all started coming back to me. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, building off of what Annette said, so I've I've read some articles that they're not sure if even if you've had it before that you would be immune um, to getting it again. Right. What what would be the what would be the reason for that? Yeah, well, yeah and and th that is the same reason why um, you know we get we get vaccinations every year for flu. You know, and the flu just undergoes just slight mutations, and here it is again back next year, and and you're back again. So these the coronaviruses are no different, you know. And so so you know, and and sadly, you know, as as it's permeating through millions and millions of people, you know, the opportunity for um for for immunity is is, is huge, you know. And so and you know and and so you get a, a vaccination, you know, and and it's based, uh, it, it'd be maybe a, uh, you know, based on a, a dead virus, you know, and um, a virus with protein studs um, that, you know, the, 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 the mutation may be, um, well, suddenly your immune system mounts the, all these memory cells against that dead virus that is a vaccination. And then the new one now is, is altered its structure enough that it doesn't work, you know? So. Right. 
Yeah. Right. So can you take that fast that even this current cycle? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that. We don't know. You know, every virus is different in terms of its speed of, yeah. of being able to mutate. You know, so one thing that is clear though is that that it has um, uh, a really highly infectious rate. You know, and that um, and that um, and its its replication rate is super fast, and that's why the lung cells are getting you know killed off so quickly. You know, so so that's. You know, that's really a bummer about this thing, for sure. Good questions, good questions. So, Andrew, I forgot, are, are you a senior this year, or are you off um, um, off to to the next level? No, I'm 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 off I'm off in the in the working world now. Um, cool. But but I think I think med school is still still on the table in the, yeah. in the next yeah. coming years. Yeah, and for, for a lot of you guys, you know, uh, where maybe you, you gave med school a shot and it didn't work, you know, um, uh, perseverance is key. And, um, and I think we, maybe we're going to have a little bit of a wake-up call in our country um, that, that um, you know, instead of having uh, USC med school being 250 student class, maybe we should have USC med school be a 400 student class. And, um, and we need more doctors, you know. It's really, really clear, you know. And... Uh, and, and here's, here's the solution, um, Nikki. If we made USC Medical School 400 students or maybe even 600 students, then maybe we can make the tuition 30,000 instead of 60,000. <laughs> that would be great. I mean, we're doing online classes. Um, so I watch all my lectures online. Hi, everyone. I'm a second year med student at Loyola, so I'm in Chicago. Um, and that was an awesome lecture, Dr. Walsh. And so much of it, I am studying retaining in my brain for step coming up. Um, so we basically have to know all the cytokines, all the immune responses. Um, we're actually on our virology block right now. So this is an, this was like studying, watching this. Yeah, lecture. that's cool. I'm sure, I'm sure in your, they, they, hopefully your instructors have redirected their virology concept to, to co you know, COVID and COVID-like, um, infections yeah. yeah we have um our our main instructor um is actually doing research on COVID 19 so we have a brand new lecture that will be on april 23rd that's just fully about COVID 19 so i can yeah. let you know what i learn about yeah. that yeah, um, yeah. It's been really it, interesting. like you know obviously all of us every day it, it's it's something new you know in terms of what what's what's out there which is awesome very cool Oh, well, I miss you guys. <laughs> we are a family. That's why I put it out there, man. You know, it's, it's, you know, doing this online thing is just, um, it's hard. It's hard, you know, because, because, you know, we don't, we don't connect, you know, in, in using this form the way we do classroom, you know, so, but, uh, yeah, it's a brave new world, that's for sure. Hope, you know, hopefully we'll figure it out, you know, and get smarter. You know, the, the other thing that's coming out of this is, you know, I, I do have friends that, um, that are professors from different countries. And so uh, we have a, um, um, a new professor in our group, um, Ming Chung Ri, and she's from South Korea. And she said, look, you know, um, the reason South Korea handled things is that, um, it has been part of our culture for probably 15 years that when when there is even just a, a flu or a cold bug bug going around, we throw on our masks and we throw on our masks and nobody gives nobody even looks at you cross-eyed sideways. It's like it's like just seeing John Walsh wearing wearing an orange shirt. It's like oh yeah, John's wearing that orange shirt today, you know. Um, and so that's going to be our has to be our new culture, I think. That you know, if, if you are sick, you throw on a mask and and, and and you thank that person for wearing the mask and don't give them a spin look. Or when a new epidemic pandemic happens, we all have masks on hand and boom, we throw them on. You know, and uh, and I, I think that's going to be the new norm for sure. Absolutely. I, my, oh, someone else. In. What's that, Alaya? Oh, I was just going to ask you, I'm, I'm sorry if I interrupted, but no, I was going to okay. ask you what, what you think about um, school opening in the fall, because I know a lot of universities are discussing, um, like, postponing 
in person school until January 2021. Yeah. So um, obviously they don't want to do it. You know, um, it's 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 all you know. You remember USC is a business, and um, and it needs to make money. And um, we're not going to get people willing to pay. Remember, I used to to kind of. Um, break USC over the coals and about the tuition. So nobody's going to spend the 500 grand a year. Okay, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> no, nobody's going to spend 60 grand a year to come to USC and do this. And that's their fear. Some people will because people want to get their 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 lives in order, you know. Um, but the large segment of USC that could care less about what we're doing right now. It's all about actions. And on um, the Trojan family, that is, uh, I would call that north side of um, Jefferson, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> and, um, and so that, that whole area is, is all based on, on fun and games and, and team connections. And they may just feel like, you know what, um, if you're not going to have houses, you know, where I can be hanging out on 32nd Street and the 9 0 then I don't know if I'm going to go. So, but, but, so the answer to that though is, is, so there is discussion that we will try and bring classes in, but per what I was talking about, of wearing masks, wearing gloves, you know, and uh, I think a lot of you, you've looked at the sanctuary uh, clothing website before, right, friends? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, I, so I was, I was talking to them yesterday. They're going to come out with some really cool gloves and, and just cosmic, you know, um, uh, face masks, and and that hopefully that'll bring us back in. So that'll be really cool. That'll be yeah. really cool. Yeah. Andrew, yeah, you had something you wanted to say, but probably about cool, the masks. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. I thought it was really interesting you talked about the culture because um, my mom actually works at the local county hospital um, on occasion, and she was telling me, which I thought was really shocking, was that up until even about just a week and a half ago when they mandated it, most of the nurses when they were, and the other doctors when they were just hanging out weren't, weren't wearing masks, even in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's such a difference in culture, right. um, right. which I think really made a difference. Yeah, no, I agree. So, so we went, uh, so, so Julie does her IVIG cycle um, once a month. So she's going down, um, not this weekend, but the following weekend. But so she went, what, three weeks ago? And uh, of course, I wasn't let in, so I had to, I sat in the garage for three hours. Um, they give her antihistamines because you have an allergic reaction to um, to the um, antibodies that are being put in your body because there's somebody else's antibodies. So so she's kind of loopy. So I so I drive home, but she said, in the, you know, here they are in the infusion center, and there were a lot of people because people don't stop having cancer just because we have a COVID-19 pandemic, and um, she said uh, so many of the nurses didn't have masks on, you know, and it was just like, she says, it was, they were like, it was like, like a usual day, la, 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 and it was like, I, I don't get it, you know, so, right, yeah, right, you tell your, right. yeah, tell your mom about that for sure, that's, that is, you know, that's a big place, UC San Diego Morris Cancer Center, big place. All right, yeah, and yeah. I'm not sure if it's because it's of supply or just because of, you know, just culture. Yeah, um, I think it's both. Yeah, I'm hoping it's it, both. Yeah, yeah, probably. Adriana, what are you gonna say? Oh, I was also just gonna say because I I work at Cedars and they send out these like COVID updates daily. And then I remember at the beginning, before everyone was being mandated to wear masks, even like at the grocery store, there were these very specific guidelines they always sent out, like depending on what kind of patient you see and where you are in the hospital, like do not wear a mask. And I think that was because they were trying to like limit or trying to limit use because they were so low on resources. And now we went that full 180 with the CDC saying we should just make our own masks because we shouldn't be outside without masks at all. So just seeing that shift within a month, is just like kind of unbelievable, I think. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, this is, you know, community. Um, you know, they should be, you know, on the side of safety. Um, and just like I said, Take a look at what with down in Korea. What did they do? No. And, um, you know, and, you know, and uh, everybody's like, what's China putting an end to it? Well, China has, <laughs> you know, China's math. So, yeah. Very interesting. Cool. 
Well, keep talking, guys. Questions? I have another question about All right. um, why it's taking so long or why we don't have like the anti, like the blood tests yet. Cause we only have the like swab ones, which yeah. I heard sometimes bring up false negatives. Cause unless you're like, you know, getting all the virus, you won't see it. So do you think the yeah, blood test would be more accurate? Yeah. And the blood test is of course is looking for antibodies, you know, um, John, you you're have your your video and voice froze for a couple of seconds so we couldn't hear you am i better uh yeah yeah okay <laughs> so so the blood test is looking for antibodies and so um so the the is to to be able to strip you know it's kind of kind of like a pregnancy strip you pee you know you put the um you put the blood on and those antibodies and it's like finding to, to bind the surface proteins that um, be off, would be on the virus. So it's a matter of being able to get the virus proteins laid out on that strip that the antibodies would bind to. And I just think they've been, I, I don't know anything about production in that way. <laughs> it, may, it may be pretty difficult to do, you know, but it, it's a fairly complicated and I just think they missed the ball, obviously. So, and in Central, you know what I mean? There's all these fly by night companies that are coming up with it, you know, and um, sit and then the CDC says, no, 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 don't use that one. And, you know, and, and I, um, Garcetti's office, you know, the, the mayor of LA, the LA district attorney came in and said that they, um, shut down all these websites that were selling these blood tapping, you know, because they they weren't working, you know. So yeah, there's we need, you know, a more centralized. Obviously, we're learning that a more centralized way of, of getting this done. Am I, yeah, am I all right? Yeah, just a second ago, nanosecond ago, you kind of auto tuned, but. It's, yeah. it, it gets better. <laughs> right. You know, there's so many people on the internet. And it's just, it's, uh, what else we do? <laughs> oh, man. Nikki can go out and do snow angels. <laughs> Luckily, the snow's not sticking and the sun peaked out this morning. So, <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to go soon, but... Um, sure. So nice to talk to you guys, and if anyone has questions about medical school, you can reach out. Um, thank you, Dr. Walsh. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, Nikki's a great resource, you know, and uh, I, I will, I'm going to have a recording of this and send it out, so um, you could share it with your friends, share it with your family, you know, whatever you want for sure, you know, so, I don't know, I, I, I found, me, I, it's been a call to act as well. I thought it was my duty to get out there and help all you guys out, help all the students out. So, yeah, just just one last little side before you leave. You know, poor Matt has been trying to get a job in the water, and <laughs> so Nikki knows my son as does Annette and Shivanti, and um, so all these licenses over the last couple of years. Um, but um, I just wanted him to get into the workplace, so he started working at UPS um, before uh, Christmas, and he's still working there. Oh my God. He says it's mayhem at UPS because he's, you know, he's a big guy, so he's loading packages, you know, and they're wearing masks, and it's just, <laughs> anyway, all righty. I can right, imagine Nikki. that's crazy. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, just before I go, I have like a, uh -huh. a three-point thing. I feel like the things to tell your friends when they ask you guys about this, it's like, it's positive sense, single-stranded RNA, so that means mm -hmm. it has its own machinery to like it can use the host machinery as soon as it gets into your cells that's why it's going to replicate be able to replicate and then mm -hmm. the washing hands is so important because dr walsh mentioned that it's enveloped so the enveloped viruses can be killed by detergents which is why when you're washing your hands they tell you to do it for 20 seconds because you're really making the foam that's going to yeah. kill the viruses so just yeah. just quick things to be able to tell people yeah yeah i we have just for our phones, we, you know, stuff like that, you know, yeah, just be careful.
Bye, everyone. All right. Bye, Nikki. Thank you. Very cool. Awesome. Questions? Good. I'm good. Luke Shoulder. Who's that guy, man? <laughs> Oh, this is from a previous thing. I had it like as a, it's kind of like a meme. Yeah. I, I forgot to change it. I forgot. He's supposed to be looking. I at like it. <laughs> yes, he he's checking out your behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. Awesome, awesome. Alrighty, guys. Well, I get to, hopefully my internet will work better in the afternoon. That afternoon's have been sad for me, huh, Maria? That again? I said my, my internet in the afternoon has been kind of sad, hasn't it? Yeah, it's your giga blasting blasting. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a meeting with, with the deans this afternoon where I'm supposed to show them how to do online education and, uh, and they won't be happy if it's not working. <laughs> very cool. Very so, so, so important. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how many of so so Bijana, did you graduate or are you still at SC? No, I'm still at SC. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. So yeah, I, I see I see his name. I think you graduated, didn't you? I can't remember she did. No. Trying to remember who who's grad. I know Keishan um graduated. So yeah, anyway. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you graduated, right? Yeah, I'm working as a medical scribe right now. Uh, hopefully, I get to apply to medical school this time, but I'm not really quite sure because they canceled all the MCATs. So um, yeah. my situation yeah. is a little bit precarious right now for this upcoming yeah. cycle. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I've heard the same from students that are in my class right now. They canceled this cycle. No, oh, you know, preparation put on their big pants for grass. Right. I don't really have a problem waiting another year. It just, I, yeah. I just want to find something to do that I feel is like productive, which has been a real struggle. Because uh, there's really nothing that is like out there that I want to do besides go to medical school right now. But yeah. And it's a tough job marking. Uh, like, like my son, Matt, you know, he, uh, environmental studies major, uh, he entered any water tires, you know, they love good and he couldn't get one again and and took special course and good enough passing grade on courses that he could then go for the state licensing exam so he got a he got a water distribution licensing exam a water treatment license continued to apply every job he was applying for they wanted three years experience you know, every, well, he works at you now. <laughs> so I hope back. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was just me, but uh, I, I, I broke up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. your, John, your, um, your audio got cut off a little bit. And bottom line is it's a tough job market. Tough job yeah. market, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Any more questions? When can we go back to the beach? <laughs> I know. Uh, good question. <laughs> when can we go back to the beach? I miss the beach too. <laughs> uh, I know. Oh no. Your uh, background is making me so nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> probably a couple, probably six weeks. Maybe, and I don't know, you know, and even then people are going to have to behave, you know, the, the problem is an article written about, I hope, my brain, Maria, my, or, um, I hope I'm okay. <laughs> um, there was an article written by a group down in San Diego, and the problem with the ocean is uh, you have ocean breezes, okay, and the has been shown to find in salt water. Then what happens is you're frolicking in the waves, and so it gets um, the the virus gets even more 
um, hydrated and particulate, and then the wind blows it all over the place. <laughs> So there's just modeling that people are a little bit fearful, you know. So who knows? I don't know what the answer is. We need some good, good, good pharma people to fix this thing. <laughs> oh shoot! Cool. So hopefully, Annette. Hopefully. So, so I forget. Are you going to UC Riverside Med School? Is that right? So I recently got accepted to USC med school too. So I have a decision oh. to make. <laughs> but oh, okay. the tuition at USC Congrats. is like so much higher. Thank you so much. So much higher than UC Riverside. And it's like, yeah. you know, the more economical, reasonable decision is to go yeah. to a UC where it's, you know, reasonable. <laughs> right. You know, and, and, and the reality is, um, the um, the your careers are based on your residency and internship, and not so much your medical school. And, yeah. Uh, so, because so, I had I had a real friend who was uh, got his got his PhD in science, biomedical engineering, and um, and he still couldn't get. He had a kind of a five GPA, and he couldn't get into good med schools. So he went to a lower tier med school. It's called mm -hmm. St. Louis University. That's not Wash U St. Louis, it's Louis University. And it cost a lot of money. And, uh, uh, but he went, and, but then he got his uh, residency and internship at University of Chicago Medical School for neurosurgery. And he's a super successful surgeon that lives up in state. So, wow. so yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't think going, I think UC Riverside is a good bet, you know? Especially if it's, you know, unless SC can come up with some funds to help you, you know, and, uh, and then, yeah, that's uh, what I'm yeah. saying. like, if they give me a scholarship, I'll be happy to go, but right, right. it's yeah. just the tuition is so ridiculous. <laughs> Why not? So what is, what is the tuition for med school now? It's 64000 And then you have to factor in cost of living in LA, you know, yeah. that's like another 20K right there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's <laughs> tough. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's good to have choices. <laughs> it's a good problem to have, yeah. yeah. You know, and for, and for those guys that are they're, they're students in the final school, so, so that tried a couple times, right? Yeah, I did. I applied twice. So everybody, you can do it. And I took a lot of years off. And I totally agree with what you say. It's just perseverance. If this is something you really want to do, you can do it a thousand percent. Absolutely. Good advice. Good advice. And, and you guys can help help you too. Hopefully, you know, yeah. You Any know, questions? I'll drop talk. my. Email. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that I can hook, hook you guys up to Annette or Nikki or whatever. So, you know, so. Awesome. Any more questions, guys? How are you? I'm, I'm doing you, okay. Wash? Thank you, Jen, for asking. I'm doing good. It's good to hear. Um, it's always good to hear. <laughs> um, you know, so this is my semester you now. So I teach uh, 315, which is a class of 200. Um, it's a class about the brand. I teach 14 right now, about 70 students. And and um, and this this type of teaching so much fatiguing because you're a little bit job, especially in and out. <laughs> um, and um, and uh, again, you know, it was funny. Julie was looking into it. There's some bases initiates a serious fight or flight response. But you don't realize it, but it does. <laughs> I mean, this is for hours you know and then um, at, at the end of the day you guys you know me teaching how i love you know, walk the aisles in the auditorium sitting here in the for four or five hours a day and it's not good 63 year old back a couple of herniated <laughs> so, so my back has been uh, and uh and i had shoulder surgery uh, key, Elijah, that was uh, 
November. Yeah, I had, I had shoulder surgery in November because because of uh, surfing. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> so, uh, so that, you know, I, I was rehabbing it. I was just starting to surf again. And so now it's getting up because I've been doing this so much, you know, and I, I need to be better. A bike upstairs, I can do this, uh, you know, with my arms, but I gotta, I just do it, you know, so. But, right. Uh, yeah. Actually, I work yeah. with uh, primary care physicians right now. And um, one of the big things is that physical therapy and um, the importance of like the education that they provide so that patients can just continue to work and improving their bodies like at home after that education has been so heavily emphasized in primary care. It's actually really interesting to see how uh, a lot of people are getting off opioid medications because of like that, that integrated health care. So it was, it, yeah. it's, it's cool. It is good. Yeah. Maybe there'll be upsides to, to the downside, you know? So. <laughs> For sure. Cool. Ooh, cool. All right. Anybody else? Steph, you doing good? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, Steph did this rock ball internship in Arizona um, for, for because of that. And then, and then the shit hit the fan and stuff. And yeah, then it was, uh, in Texas. Um, yeah, it was um, in Texas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe yeah. in the future. Yeah, probably next year. Next year. Yeah, tough time. times. And I hope all you guys are doing well financially. You know, um, it's tough. You know, um, you you know, in terms of getting money from the government, um, you just have to. Um, be a real squeaky wheel um, and you have to really be on it and don't accept no for an answer. You know, um, it, it's just, it's the way it is in life. In terms of bill paying, I kind of told, like, I remember um, uh, Lai and Maria about it, you know, and, you know, it, local laws have been changed. So um, if you can't pay your rent, if you can't pay your mortgage, um, you know, you, you don't have to. You know, there's been, if a landlord's coming on your ass doing that to be assholes, legally you um, have the ability to, to defer everything. And and this may continue to roll, you know, and it's just, and you just got to, um, you know, research um, state, local, and, and federal law and, and, and just help sites about, well, you know, what can I do about paying my rent and this and bills and stuff like that super important cool. all right that's my my fatherly advice <laughs> awesome how about you Maya how are you I'm good okay, cool. <laughs> trying to learn at home kind of tough yeah. so just talking in the kitchen and all around the house so yeah very cool, very cool. Are you did you graduate yet can't remember I don't remember graduating right. this this May. This right? Yeah. Or yeah. I guess virtually graduating. I don't know. You know, I mean, what they're going to do, I mean, I'm just saying, I have not done this, but for people that were supposed to walk this this May, they will have to do something when, when the dust is settled. So maybe you will walk in November or maybe you'll walk in February or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they know, sent out like a survey either like fall 2020 or spring 2021 yeah, something like yeah, that yeah yeah because yeah. yeah, it's it's good it's, it's a pass it, it's fine you know a lot of good photos you get a pic <laughs> <laughs> i'll recreate them <laughs> yeah. all right all right well thank you I'm this good. Is, where, now, where are you living at, Shimoki? So I'm in St. Louis. I go to OT school at WashU. Yeah. So right. we've transitioned completely online. Yeah. And I was supposed to start clinical rotations in May, but then they got canceled because I was at a skilled nursing facility, so they're not letting people in. And then therapy has just been cut across the board just because people aren't having elective surgeries anymore. And people aren't going to school, so there's like a backlog right now. Yeah. But hopefully by 2021, I'll be able to go on my clinicals. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, they had the, the CFO for the for the Mayo Clinic in in um, Minnesota on CNN the other day, and um, and so they're having to furlough people, um, and they're which is crazy. They're having to cut people's salaries. Now these are you know the first responders, the new generation of first responders. But the, but but the problem is they're the revenue that they get from elective surgeries is gone. You know right. And um, unless it's absolutely mandatory, and so, and so that's you know by hysteria, and so that's yeah, that's the problem. You know, so that's what it is. It's a you have to break new world. And I'm blessed that I'm in a position that I'm still doing my job and making an income. You know, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Anybody else? All right. All right. Okay. Well, for all, um, I see. Um, I see Namisha. There. Hi, Namisha. That's cool. Hi, She's in. She's still. So, what time is it in the in in India right now, Namisha? It's just past midnight. Oh, it's past midnight. Wow. That's a trip. Yeah. Another trip. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. 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 I have a. Uh, you guys know Sairaj Kapi, who's a friend of mine, who's program and he he was um was he went back to see his parents in India and um and stuck there and uh, and he was there when the government made the announcement of the lockdown but were not ready for the sociological impact and instead of having people isolating they didn't have a lot of people are on um, you know the lower end socioeconomic scale and so they they wanted to go back to their homes so they could get food and stuff. And so there was this rush to the train stations and it looked, it looked pretty bad. Yeah. Well, awesome. Who else is there? I see Christine. Is that Bach? <laughs> yes, it is. I'm surprised you remember. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, 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 it's funny. I recognize voices and, it's just like this waste of brain area, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was sad that Courtney Shen didn't join us, though. I know. I know. Yeah, Christine and Courtney always sit next to each other in the auditorium. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, well, I guess we're done here. Unless, unless anybody wants to stick with the talk more. Um, Maya saying goodbye. If you want to say goodbye, keep in touch about your med school stuff. Bye, Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. My pleasure, Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Thank seeing you again. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Good, great seeing you again, Andrew. Stay Thank safe. you so much, Professor. Thank right, you. Thomas. Bye, Kijan. Absolutely. Boom, boom, boom. Look at how big everybody's picture is getting. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Dr. Walsh, before you leave, I forgot. I was trying to find the article. So, um, can you hear me? What's that? Uh, can yeah, you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, um, so, uh, yesterday I was, uh, I was watching like the news with my, pa with my uh, parents and, um, a lot of, there was a, there was like an, not, not an article, but it was like kind of like a, a short snippet or like story, if you will, on like, um, I don't know what the exact app was called, but it was kind of like a software and it was like a CT monitoring software uh, to like, which when installed on like multiple phones um, mm -hmm. is kind of like works through Bluetooth, Bluetooth of like notifying uh, each phone notifies like another phone and then like the central database that it was around an another phone that had that application. And mm -hmm. so if it was kind of like an, like a, like a, like a, maybe like a way to like stop this to slow the spread, like an opt in sort of thing where yeah. If, yeah. if two phones were like, you know, close together or something of the sort. And then one of them, one of the patients or one of the people who owned the phones uh, developed COVID-19, right. They could right. Uh, update that like application. And then that, um, that would automatically update the other person who was next to them that, Oh, you've been in contact. And that sort of thing. And obviously there were a lot of privacy concerns, but I thought like maybe what are your thoughts on that sort of thing? Um, it was just yeah. something that was in the works, if you will. No, that's, I mean, that's, we need it. I think we need it, you know, um, I want to know, you know, um, and especially as soon as, you know, testing becomes, 
available too. So then you immediately run down and get tested, you know, and, and so so that way you um because I think the problem too is people just sitting there going, Oh, do I have it? Do I not have it? Or and then they, they're too too slow to pull the trigger and go go get help at yeah. the hospital. And then the problem is, you know, you're in one of those asymptomatic people, you know, and uh, and then uh then you start spreading around the you, know, you, you go wedding, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, and and boom, you know, so they they will figure out the privacy. You know, they, you know, realistically, there's not a huge amount of privacy that's going on right now, anyways. You know. Yeah, you both. Uh, right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the of tracking of what I do. It's insane in terms of when I'm on the internet or on phone. Or I'm like, what? What? How in the hell do you know this? You know, it's just like so It's there. So. Cool. Yeah, that's just that's just all I wanted to kind of touch yeah. on. That's what I was reading, in, at least. Yeah, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, my mom this? wanted to come on and ask you a few questions, but she's she also she's also a professor, so she's in a lecture right now. Yeah. Uh, well, anytime, anytime. You know, absolutely. And we could always we could always chat individually too. You know, so just do our own little personalized Zoom Zoom section. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, I have a physics lecture coming up, so I'll, I'll see you soon, Dr. Walsh. Thank All you right, so much. You. All right, my pleasure. All right. And then there was us. <laughs> All righty. I think I had to step away, so, um, so that was good. Um, there she is. No, she's there. Hi. Hi. She's back. Hi. Hi. I was going to leave, but then I heard Luca ask a question, so I stayed. Yeah. I, that's right. I forget you guys were you guys were friends. I forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Our friend. Little. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But thank you so very, much very cool. for this lecture. That was very helpful. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, you know, I mean, knowledge is power, and, and this way you'll be able to interpret better. You know, I, I think it, it it helps too to build on your knowledge base. You know that you no, acquired. Sure. You know, and uh, and uh, yeah, moving forward, you know, it's, it's public service. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna take a look at those like links and interactive yeah. websites. I feel like that'd be really yeah, yeah. helpful. Absolutely. Like I said, oh. I, I updated I updated my PowerPoint, so I I will get a get I'll get the new one out too. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. I'll take a look. Anything you wanted to say, Adriana? Oh no, that's that's just what I was gonna say. So I could look yeah, at the, yeah, the update. Yeah, I'll send I'll send that out for sure for sure. Okay, sounds awesome. good. All but right. it was great well, talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Stay in touch. <laughs> yes, for sure. We'll stay in touch. Okay. Bye, Dr. Walsh. All righty. Okay. Thank you, Maria, for helping out. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is really uh, awesome. I'm this yeah. I mean, this helps alleviate any underlying anxiety and all of that, you know, everything yeah, that's yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah, you know, you're you're part of the 310 alumni. You sat through everything last semester. <laughs> so it's good to pick all this. I couldn't hear you. Sorry, your 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 audio cut out. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I say that very relevant. Uh, and you know, everything that we learn and, and just that the immune system is so complicated yeah. so complicated you know? mm -hmm. and and but you know it, it doesn't matter what area of medicine you go into um but immunity is key really key yeah yeah cool all righty well i'm gonna go get some lunch eh? <laughs> awesome i'll see you next week yeah, all right. have a good, good. weekend you too bye-bye